The SPI tells us Manchester United a 75% favorite to bring home the League Cup over Southampton. Let's assume that they win the League Cup against Southampton. Craig, what else do they have to do this season for Mourinho to honestly claim it as a success? Get in the Champions League. That's it? Either via, way? Via, via, top or via Europa? Europa League or, or, or the league position. Um, I, I suppose if they were to pick up the League Cup and the FA Cup and they've got a big game against Chelsea and that, then he would paint that and the club might paint that as some sort of uh, forward thinking. But I think United, the size of that club globally, and there's been reports recently how much money they're making, uh, really have to be in the forefront of big club football, and that's the Champions League. It, it was just unfortunate that they had a bit of a, a ropey September, October. Uh, they didn't they didn't perform particularly well. I think that's mainly because Mourinho, when he came in, had so much to do with that squad. When he started to work out the, the players, when he was getting Matter in and getting Mkhitaryan in, when he was fit, and then Pogba, Ka uh, Carrick, and then Herrera, I think Herrera's been absolutely key there. And, of course, with, with Zlatan scoring goals... I never, ever saw that coming. I, I, he has been absolutely phenomenal for Manchester United. I, I'm staggered at the level that he's played at and the number of games he's played. Manchester United has to be in the Champions League because they sell themselves as one of the biggest clubs in the world and the history and everything, that the magic of Old Trafford and all these other stories that we hear about Manchester United. If that's the truth, they have to be playing at the highest level and in club football, highest level is Champions League. All right, so let's get predictions. Craig, what do you think for the final? League Cup final? I yeah. think uh, uh, they'll be too quick, uh, too strong for Southampton. Manchester United. Yep, 3 1. 3 1. Yep. Oh. No, yeah, they'll, 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 Southampton will score. All right. Oh, well, that's a slight, <laughs> <a> slight consolation. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> well, you've got to give them something, <laughs> Truggy lad. <laughs> Build up to the EFL Cup final on Sunday between Manchester United and Southampton. Jose Mourinho has been complaining that United have had three <laughs> extra games to play, <laughs> while Southampton have simply been resting. Dear no sympathy, me. tiny little violin there. No please. sympathy whatsoever. When you're in major competitions, of course, you're going you're gonna to play a lot more games. I get the sympathy with losing Mkhitaryan and Michael Carrick. I totally get that playing a couple of games in a week. Now, Southampton have been on an incredible run in this competition. So it's five games, five clean sheets. Incredible. And their goals have come from all over the park, seven different scorers. Yeah, um, they are quite sort of prolific when they're, when, they're, when they're getting their goals in terms of how they're spreading it around the team. You know, I look at Shane Long and I think terrific centre forward, but he's one of these players that runs the channels. He's, he's quite unselfish. He links the play really well. And, he, and he's, he must be a centre midfielder's dream, really, because he does all the donkey work and everyone else is getting their goals in and around him. This competition means so much to Jose Mourinho. He won it three times with Chelsea, and it's the first competition you can win, so great momentum. As for Southampton, they won the Football League trophy in 2010 mm. yeah. and the FA Cup, but that was back in 1976, a long time ago for those yeah. Saints fans. Yeah, the, I mean, listen, they're a good side. They're, they're a fantastic model on how to, how to build a football club. You know, they're constantly using their academy, bringing young players through. They're constantly, you know, selling them on for big money, which is, you know, it's arguably is that the right way to go about things. But they've spent a lot of money on the likes of Gabbiadini. So they've got players like Shane Long. They're getting their goals from everywhere on the football pitch. They're a very good side when they're on it. It's a, they're a hard side to try and get a handle on. You could never, you could never look at Southampton and say, right, they're nailed on to win a Premier League game or they're nailed on to win against Man United. They're a tough side in terms of they might ship the odd goal, even though in, in this competition they haven't conceded any. But they're a type of side that have, have, have lost Jose Font, they've lost Van Dijk as well. So two major players have gone out of their 11. So it's a hard one to call this because on any given day, Southampton can play well and score goals. OK, well, we're certainly looking forward to it. The game is on Sunday and all the build-up will be right here at ESPNFC.com. Wayne Rooney confirmed today that he won't be going to China mm -hmm. for now. But where will he be at the start of next season? Do you like the drama I did there? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, like where will he be? Uh, Gab, let's start with oh. you. Where's oh. Wayne Rooney going to be at Fake the start out. of next season? <laughs> I have no idea. Wayne Rooney doesn't uh, know either. Uh, um, right. But I think it would, be it would be surprising if he were still at, uh, at Old Trafford. Uh, his agent, Paul Stratford, had all sorts of uh, meetings with, uh, with different people who were exploring options in China and in need elsewhere. There were some stories, including in his playing time, would really dwindle. So probably best for everybody if he moves on. Gab, if I was to give you some of Steve Nichols' money... Oh, boy. What would you, where would you put it? Where would you say he would go? I don't know. I, there's a lot of buzz, a lot of push here about saying, like, oh, he's definitely going to China. Uh, some people had even reported it as a, some kind of done deal. I, to me, at this stage, from what we know of Wayne Rooney, um, it would be a deal you only do for money. Uh, as I see it, he's made more than enough money in yeah. his career. 
Um, and especially if he gets that enormous payoff, uh, let's not forget, he makes around 15 million pounds a season from uh, Manchester United. Um, I, I personally think he might be tempted to slightly follow his heart, maybe go back to Everton oh. if, uh, mm. if United are okay with it. Um, maybe go somewhere else, but I, I don't. I, I personally don't see him going and and following the cash to China. I, I don't see the point of it. Land of the free, home of the brave. MLS, good old U.S. of A. America. Wow. Hey, LA Galaxy. Well, maybe they've been quiet this offseason, by the way. Uh, I, I would suggest that he in MLS, obviously a big name. Wimmer is 31 years but old. Isn't the narrative not, now they want Wayne younger? Wayne Rooney's not 34 or 35. Right. Wayne Rooney is maybe not the superstar he was, mm. but Wayne Rooney is still one cracking football player. And he would score as many goals as, as Keane did at, at LA during his time if he came to MLS. The one thing I would say about Gab suggesting that it's possible he goes to Everton, I think that would be a huge mistake for him professionally, and I think for Everton, I think that would send the wrong message as well. I would, also, I would so, also say... So it's perfect. Yeah. MLS is perfect. I, I would also say that for a guy who's been in the spotlight his whole life, and he has been in the media and newspapers and tabloid and all those of these things, he needs to change of pace. Yeah. And, it's, it's like when you, when you moved over here. Well, it was nice, tabloids and front pages. <laughs> kids and back pages, pages and all sorts of other things. <laughs> pace, but pace and Ali don't go. Yeah. <laughs> pace and Ali don't go. <laughs> anyway. There he right. is. <laughs> with another Shirley <laughs> Terry. <Terrible. laughs> yeah. It's his fifth of the night. Um, this isn't going to be the last time. I'm sure we'll discuss oh, the future no. of Wayne Rooney. Uh, keep it here on the website for more. The questions you were asking me were questions for him. Only him could could answer the questions, and he did it. I think exactly in the right moment because I think your question is the last question about Wayne Rooney, and I think he's the last or should be the last until the end of the season. He says no way he moves. He stays. He wants to help the team to fight for the for the trophies. I told already that I would be happy if that. That is the decision. So yes, he's fine. He's training with the team. He was not selected to to Saint Etienne because he was not ready to play, but he was ready to have one more important training session. And no doubt, no doubt, he's involved in the game. The last 16 of the Europa League draw has been made, and Manchester United will be facing FC Rostov of Russia away first. Now, Don, I'm not going to be disrespectful and say that it's a free pass into the quarterfinals. Definitely not. Um, they're very solid at home, but what I will say is there are some teams that they would have wanted to avoid, and they mm. have. Yeah, Leon for one, Roma the other, uh, Schalke and Gladbach, so they've avoided the big guns. You'd still make Manchester United favourite. I've, I've, I've done a couple of games watching Rostov, and I've got some good players. Look out for the boy Gatskan in the middle of the park. He's a very, very good technician. Polos has got his goals as a centre forward. He runs the channels. Good link man, but he's got his numbers as well. But my, my memory of, of playing in Russia for Liverpool in March, it will be absolutely freezing. Right. So take your gloves and Some your scarves and your sleeves. Yeah, take and it in all. terms of travel, both for the fans and, of course, more importantly for the players, we're talking about just under 2,000 miles between Manchester United mm. and Russia. And then four days later, they face Chelsea in the Cup. Mourinho has already been complaining oh, about the fixtures. That's a shock. But is it, is it going to be that tough? It is what it is, Ali. He listen, wants a strong side, yeah, right? Listen, it could have been kinder. Of course, could have, they, they, they could have had an easier flight uh, into Europe somewhere. Um, but listen, it, it's... It's a hard ask playing in Russia. I know that for a fact we lost heavily with Liverpool. We've got battered over there 4-2. And it's a, it's a demanding place to go with the travel and with the conditions as well. So I think Jose looked at it and think it could be worse. He could have had a, a, harder t a harder sort of task, if you like. But at the same time, you'd fancy him over the two legs. But they don't underestimate this Rostov side. They've got some very, very good players. OK, so overall on balance, you think Ma Manchester United and Mourinho should be pretty happy with this Pretty happy-ish, but knowing Jose, he'll have a little cry. There are certainly some exciting clashes in this last 16. There is a Belgian derby between Ghent and Genk. Make sure you say that one right. There's also a German derby between Schalke and Mönchengladbach. And not to mention a huge game between Lyon and Roma. All the very latest right here at ESPN FC. I'm proud uh, about uh, our journey uh, in this competition because we, we started uh, the competition with young players. We, uh, we improved uh, with them and... Uh, 
for, uh, against uh, Sunderland, Crystal Palace, uh, away the uh, Arsenal. Uh, and after we uh, is um, for the semi-final against Liverpool, it, it was an uh, experienced play, uh, and now it's important to uh, to, to finish uh, the the work. It's good work, but uh, all this uh, shows uh, the philosophy of Southampton to to improve young players and to keep also uh, good ambitions uh, to to find a, to find a final. Perhaps. Uh, uh, this team is a, a good place and a good a good opportunity for for them. But we we respect them, but uh, but no uh, fear them because uh, uh, we see we saw uh, uh, last game against uh, Arsenal, uh, against the semi final uh, Liverpool. Uh, we can do difference. We can play a good uh, good football. Uh, and we can have a, a good result. It's a football. We will see uh, the, the the result. Um, we we are under underdogs, uh, of course. But uh, in football, all it's possible. And uh, I'm in confidence with with my play because they work hard and uh, on the, on the pitch and uh, they keep uh, humility and uh, ambitious. And for me, it's most important. Can Manchester United win all cups and get top four with their squad depth? All Cup. So they've really got League Cup final, haven't they? FA Cup, they're still in. Europa League. Yeah, they can. They can, but I don't think that will happen. That's a huge ask. Isn't it? Yeah. It, it is. I'm, oh, oh. Well, I think they, they, they finished job four. When did Liverpool do that? 2000? I don't know. 2001. 2001. Oh, well, that's a guess. Uh, is that when they won the uh, Europa League? No, they was? won the UEFA Cup, didn't UEFA they? UEFA Cup, yeah, against they the Spanish the League team. Cup, the FA Cup. I can't remember. I don't think that will happen, but uh, I tell you what, they could win this... Uh, I think they could be just putting their, their money in this Europa League this year. Really? Well, I think they might find that could be a better avenue in than the top four. No. no. Really? I think they're going to finish top four. I think they're going to finish top four. Why are you, why are you talking to me like that? Dan, <laughs> you know, Dan asked the question and answered himself. Seems the Europa League's easy. It's easy to finish top Shut four. Shut up, we rubbish that competition every time we're on here. Now all of a sudden, you think it's great. No, I just think that other countries take it more seriously than we do, therefore, I think it's tougher for United than maybe we suggest. Welcome to Extra Time. Thank you for your tweets. Manchester United still in all three cups and in fight for fourth place. Yet, why do people, i.e. Shaka Hislop, uh -huh. still criticise Mourinho? Well, he doesn't like him, does he? When no, I, no, when no, no, last no, no. have I criticised Mourinho? Hey, he loves Mourinho. Remember when that interview? Have, on, when last have I criticised Mourinho? I don't know, you've been quite nice to United recently. Yeah, I didn't say they're going to finish top four. Oh, he's going high. Who's that? <laughs> Ahmed. Ahmed. Never mind. Whoa. Oh, oh, wow. Whoa. What? What? The look away. I'm gonna, the I'm the I'm look I'm away. I'm, I'm going to step back from the ledge. Uh, Ahmed restraint. got me to the edge. Restraint. I'm going to step back. I thought you didn't like Mourinho. Huh? I thought you didn't like Mourinho. I love me, Mourinho.